Prior to the epidemic, Chinese banks gave considerable debt restructuring to African governments and have continued to do so. Cooperation with China remains unpopular on Capitol Hill. However, knowing how Chinese financial institutions function in Africa may help shape the discussion on how to assist Africans recover from the economic repercussions of the pandemic. According to our study at the Johns Hopkins Size China Africa Research Initiative, CARI, China has played a key role in assisting African nations with debt management. Between 2000 and 2019, we found 16 examples of debt restructuring totaling $7.5 billion in 10 African nations. China also wiped off at least 94 interest-free loans totaling at least $3.4 billion in arrears. The G20 debt relief is available to 38 African nations in total. They owe a total of $25 billion in 2021 repayments alone. So far, 31 nations have asked for help. China is taking part in global debt reduction for the first time as part of the G20 endeavor. As Africa's largest bilateral creditor, China holds at least 21% of African debt, and payments to China account for over 30% of debt service in 2021. Angola alone accounts for about one-third of the total. Welcome to ThinkRich Media the community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business, and personal development content to inform, motivate, and inspire you. We also want to introduce you to our special African development playlist because we strongly believe entrepreneurship, rather than global pity, is the key to Africa's growth and development. So if you're African and you aren't subscribed to our community, you're missing out. Infrastructure is what Africa needs most and infrastructure is what China is most equipped to provide. Many African leaders are aware that only 30 years ago, China was in a similar position to where they are now, a backwater country whose economy accounted for less than 2% of world GDP. However, over the last few decades, China has astounded the world by using infrastructure to propel economic growth building a high-speed rail network that now exceeds 29,000 kilometers, paving over 100,000 kilometers of new expressways, constructing over 100 new airports, and constructing no less than 3,500 new urban areas, including 500 economic development zones and 1,000 city-level development zones. China's GDP has more than tenfold increased throughout this time span, and it now ranks second in the world. Chinese lenders have given money to nearly every country on the continent, with eight borrowing more than $5 billion each this century. Despite China's allegations of death trap diplomacy, Chinese businesses are winning the majority of megaprojects in Africa and accounting for a sizable percentage of all big foreign contractors' earnings on the region. In an interview with the South China Morning Post, Hong Zhang, a researcher at George Mason University's Shar School of Policy and Government in West Virginia, stated that Chinese construction and engineering contractors have attained a dominant position in the African market and are winning larger scale or technically more demanding projects that domestic contractors are unable to complete. Africa has become the world's fastest urbanizing area, with rural migrants migrating into cities at a rate that has even surpassed that of China and India, as the continent becomes one of the final frontiers of the Fourth Industrial Revolution. This fast change offers enormous problems, but it also gives tremendous possibilities for governments willing to spend billions in an infrastructure construction revolution unlike any seen before in history. In 1979, Chinese businesses made their first foray into Africa in search of wealth, and they have since risen to dominate the continent. China is currently Africa's greatest commercial partner, with yearly commerce totaling more than $200 billion. According to a recent McKinsey & Co. research, there are over 10,000 Chinese-owned businesses operating throughout Africa, with a total value of Chinese business in Africa of more than $2 trillion since 2005 and $300 billion in investment now on the table. In addition, Africa has eclipsed Asia as China's most significant foreign building market.
In certain African nations, such as Tanzania, Chinese firms control more than 80% of the market. According to Hong Zhang, since 2019, Chinese businesses have accounted for 60% of all large foreign contractors' income in Africa, and China's share in this market is stronger than anywhere else. Despite China's strong position, experts believe Beijing's involvement in African infrastructure projects have led in debt trap diplomacy, in which governments are forced to give up vital assets in exchange for debts they cannot repay. Some African governments have recently begun to investigate the cost-benefit assessments of Chinese investments, as well as the terms of such financing. Tanzania's late president, John Magufuli, canceled a $10 billion loan agreement made with China by his predecessor, Jack Kikweed. According to local news sources, the financing agreement required the port to be developed on disadvantageous financial conditions. Leading African financial experts have encouraged African countries to carefully read the conditions set by China. It would not, in their perspective, preclude Beijing from taking some of their assets, as it has done in recent years in Kenya, Madagascar, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. The International Monetary Fund has also repeatedly warned African and other third world nations that rising Chinese loans are hazardous. It puts pressure on Chinese creditors and creates some insecurity or vulnerability. With all of these worries, China has emerged as an important partner in Africa's urbanization drive, with Chinese companies driving or funding a major share of the continent's infrastructure projects. It is no secret that Africa's growth has been hindered by a lack of infrastructure across the continent. As Chinese President Xi Jinping previously stated, insufficient infrastructure is seen as the most significant impediment to Africa's growth. To fulfill demand, African countries would need to invest $130 billion to $170 billion in infrastructure per year, but the African Development Bank estimates that they are $68 billion to $108 billion short. According to the Washington Post statistics, China's participation in Africa, particularly private Chinese investment, is reaping considerable advantages. We discovered convincing evidence of job creation, connections to local suppliers and consumers, local subcontracting, and even local piracy in industries, ranging from cotton and leather processing to railroad construction and operations and plastic trash recycling. Thank you for watching. If there are any tips you think should be on this list but is not, leave a comment let us know. Help our channel grow. We hope this video has been helpful to you. Support us by liking the video, subscribing, and turning on your notification. <laughs>